looking so good. This is a typical Italian appetizer. It's tasty, genuine and extremely simple. But most important thing is, do you know the name of this amazing food? If you thought bruschetta, well, almost. Do you remember the CH sound? If you want, check the first video and for the next time, enjoy your bruschetta. In this video, we'll see the most used verb in Italian language. So, the verb to be at the present tense. But first, a quick introduction of subject pronouns. These pronouns are used in place of the subject of the sentence and are io, tu, egli, noi, voi, essi. Ok, pay attention on the third person singular. Egli is used in grammar books. It's grammatically correct, but it's never used in speeches, neither in formal ones. Egli is generic. It's used in place of lui and lei, just to not repeat the same verb twice. Same thing for essi. Sometimes it's used in very formal speeches, but never in a normal conversation. And instead of essi, we use loro. Loro is used for a group of people, but it doesn't matter if the group is made up of male, female or both, because loro is generic. I spoke about lui and lei, so he and she, but where is it? Well, we don't have it. Every single noun in Italian is male or female, not just people, but also animals, objects or even abstract concepts. Ok, let's get back to our verb. As I said, today we'll see this fundamental verb at the present tense that in Italian is called indicativo presente. This is the most used tense because it's a proof to speak about actions take place in the present moment. Io parlo davanti a una telecamera. To indicate habits. Io sono una grande mangiatrice di cioccolato. Or moods. Io sono felice. To express an absolute truth. Il sole è una stella. To speak about actions started in the past, but that continue even now. Lui lavora lì da cinque anni. Sometimes to speak about historical events. La seconda guerra mondiale finisce nel 1945. Or even in an informal speech in place of the future tense to speak about events very close in time. Domani vado dal dentista. And now the verb to be, il verbo essere. Io sono. Tu sei. Egli è. Noi siamo. Voi siete. Essi sono. The first person singular and the third person plural are written and pronounced in the same way, so pay attention on the context, especially when the subject io or loro in this case is omitted. Yes, because subject pronouns may be omitted, except when necessary. For example, if I say sono qui, it means that I am here. But if I say the same phrase with a scary face, maybe looking into the distance like sono qui. Yeah, I know, I'm a very good actress. You may think there is an army of zombies coming, so they are here. Okay, let's forget the zombies and get back to our verb. I pronounce the third person singular as E. Do you remember the two sounds of this vowel? So E and E. Pay attention on the pronunciation because E is the verb. The third person singular at the present tense. If I say E instead, I'm saying AND, so the conjunction. Il gatto è furbo e pigro. E, E. The pronunciation helps you when you speak or listen. Instead, the accent helps you when you read or write. The accent is not something put there just because it was nicer. It's a serious mistake if you don't write it on the verb form. Ok, let's repeat. Io sono. Tu sei, egli è, that could be, lui è, or lei è, noi siamo, voi siete, 
essi sono. That becomes loro sono. Now, how do we use the verb in an affirmative sentence? It's super easy. Soggetto, verbo, oggetto. This is called frase semplice. Of course, there are also a more complex version, but for now, let's see the simple sentence. Io sono qui. Tu vai al negozio. Noi parliamo italiano. Remember that the subject could be omitted. So, sono qui. Vai al negozio. Parliamo italiano. In a negative sentence, we have the same structure plus a negative adverb before the main verb. Usually, this negative adverb is non. Io non sono qui. Tu non vai al negozio. Noi non parliamo italiano. Even in these cases, the subject could be omitted. So, non sono qui. Non vai al negozio. Non parliamo italiano. The interrogative sentence, you must add a question mark at the end of the affirmative or the negative sentence and change the intonation. For some questions, you have to add an interrogative pronoun, but it's not the case of previous examples. Io sono qui becomes Io sono qui or sono qui that becomes Sono qui? It's very little the difference, I know. Same thing for the negative sentence. Io non sono qui. Io non sono qui. Non sono qui. Non sono qui. As usual, more you listen, more natural will become for you to recognize and use correctly an interrogative sentence. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video and click on the subscribe button. Alla prossima! Mm-hmm.